Hey everyone! In my second installment of Padme Inspired Hair, I'm going to try and recreate her three-tiered ponytail and four-pronged headpiece. Since I'm not an experienced metal worker, I'm going to be using silver polymer clay instead. I'm also using a pair of scissors, silver craft wire and 20 gauge along with some chain nose pliers and nylon jaw pliers. I've also got a glue gun and glue sticks on hand and most importantly, I'll be using a glass cutting board which will provide a smooth surface to work on. The first step is pretty obvious in that I've got to unwrap my clay. I really like this brand Sculpey because it's pre-packaged with these sort of perforated divides that are already in place. This makes it especially easy to split it up, and you can see that I'm just following those lines and breaking them apart so that I'll have four perfectly balanced blocks. I'll be using one and a half for each in the headband. Once the right rations of material have been allotted for each part of my headdress, I began to condition the clay. This is done by kneading and warming it up in one's hands until it feels pliable and soft. When I was sure that it was flexible enough, I began to roll each piece into as even of a ball as was possible. Since I don't have a typical head block, I'm going to use a mannequin for measurement. Generally, these heads are a little smaller than an actual human head, but while experimenting with this project, I found that the clay spread a little bit while it was baking, hence the reason I decided to work with something that had a smaller circumference. You can see that I'm unspooling large pieces of the craft wire and bending them to the mannequin. I used my fingers to make notches at the ears, essentially marking the place where the headband will eventually sit, but I did leave sizable amounts of excess out on either side. It may initially seem wasteful to do this, but I'll be using those ends once the clay has all been packed on. Now that my frames are ready, it's time to spread the clay onto each of them. To do this, I'm using my palms to roll all of the polymer balls into cylinders. This is incredibly easy and basically takes no time to do. The only actual thought I put into it was the length. They need to extend from notch to notch in the wire and shouldn't be longer or shorter than these markings. As soon as it was just right, I began to press the wire between my two points into the clay. I wanted it to be as centered within the cylinder as was possible, but you'll see that while doing this the clay naturally flattens a bit and that's a good thing. The press shape actually begins to resemble a headband. The wire won't stay in place though unless you pinch the clay over it, and don't worry if it looks messy because the only part that'll show once you're done is the smooth side that's flat against the glass. Going back to the mannequin now, I began to assemble everything. Some of the wire needed to be bent a little more flush to the head, but my real focus was connecting the ends. When I first began to experiment with this idea, I tried putting it together after baking each piece individually. It didn't really sit right at the end, and it just felt way more effective to join the pieces while the clay was still wet. One of the other things I was worried about was baking craft wire, but after scouring a number of cosplay forum boards, I found out that the general consensus is that it's okay. You can see that I've laid it on top of a piece of baking parchment on a normal cooking tray, and I'm just going to follow the instructions on the packaging, which says that it needs 15 minutes at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. So I just set my alarm and took a moment to clean up my workspace while I waited. After it had cooled down, I put the hardened piece back onto the head and started on the right side of the crown. I used one of the wires to bind the other three, and I did the same thing on the left side as well. Once I had two solid wrapped up ends, I just bent them around one another so that I had one seamless piece at the back. I forgot to showcase the grey ribbon during the portion of the video in which I displayed the necessary materials, and that's because I initially felt like this step was optional. But I kind of feel now that it's probably an important part of the project, since the ribbon covering acts like a barrier between the hair and the craft wire. It's just a simple way of protecting your tresses from potentially getting caught in it, not to mention it helps with the overall aesthetic. And last but not least, I'm using Sculpey's recommended paint on gloss, but I bet you could use a number of other things too, even and including clear nail polish. I would have preferred my aerosol shellac, but my husband was home and he hates the smell. Now for the actual hair project itself, I prepped by using an 18mm tapered wand. I felt that by putting some texture and volume into my naturally fine hair, I could offset any bulkiness from the crown itself. I used a rat tail comb and made two vertical partings at the front on either side of my face. And after that, I made a third section. This is a horizontal line right at the back and in the middle of the head. For now, I'm lifting this piece up and clipping it out of the way. The crown came next, and I basically just sat it onto my head in the place I thought best with the hair from the back in between the headbands and the wire ribbon wrapped half. Once I released it from the clip, it fell over on top of it, essentially covering it up from view. Having the hair laced through the headpiece also helps in terms of keeping it more securely in place. I used my hand mirror to help me move around the curls, and when I felt they were laying in a flattering position, I tied everything in the back into a low ponytail. 
But before moving on, I decided to tackle those pieces along my face, and I think you can see that I'm simply twisting them back and bobby pinning them. The goal was to cover as much of the sides of the crown as was possible, but even with the lift from the curl, my hair is so fine you could still see through it. I probably could have used some clip-in extensions here, but instead I tried to move my hair around with open pins. Anyway, the two ends are tied together, and I used one of those topsy tail tools to pull it through to the larger one at my neck. After that, it's pretty much smooth sailing as the rest of the style is relatively uncomplicated. My next hair elastic was tied in a few inches below the one at the nape, and the one after that was even lower on the length. And to cover the elastics, I used a pair of scissors, some of the same gray ribbon from my project, and double-sided tape. And with that, I was finished. I hope you had fun watching my hair video today. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And until next time, have fun, keep braiding, and may the fourth be with you. Bye!